Hi guys, it's Chuck Rowe, and this is Forge and Crew. So what is the big reason? When you, when you as foragers go out and you talk to people about eating stuff that you found in the woods or your yard, what's the first thing they usually say? Well, you gotta be real careful or you can die. That seems to be the biggest fear that gets spread around. I mean, and that seems to be a fear that has been passed almost like it was on purpose. So today, this video is gonna show you why some people have that fear and why you shouldn't. So we're gonna talk about this plant, Daucus carota, which is also the same plant you put in your gardens every year. It's just been selectively bred to be sweeter, it's just been selectively bred, and you know it as a carrot. So let's find out what this plant is. So now that we've loosened up the root, we're gonna go ahead and get this plant out, known as wild carrot, Queen Anne's lace, and here, when we remove, everything else that we dug up with it you're gonna see the carrot you can see it's a main tap root it has some smaller roots that come off it just like a carrot and you're gonna see that they resemble carrot leaves a lot they're very lacy hence the name Queen Anne's lace but here's some things we really want to look at you see those little hairs on the stem on this one, they're not as apparent as some other ones, but these are smaller plants. Here's a larger one, and you can definitely see the hairs. Now, the floret. You're gonna see that it has many different stems that come from one central place on the terminal of the stem, and they all have bundles of flowers on them. Some of them are open, some of them aren't. But the main thing you wanna see with Queen Anne's lace like this one before it opened you see that center flower right here that is something that you're going to want to find on your queen anne's lace it's not always there sometimes that flower falls first but remember that when we go to the next plant so what are some of the things you could use wild carrot for besides well carrot you can use the leaves the leaves are edible, the stems are very woody, and the flowers are also edible. So there's a couple of different ways you can cook flowers up, and I think anybody that's ever eaten a dandelion flower cooked in a pan knows that those are really cool ways to um, take in nutrients that you're gonna need. So, Queen Anne's Lace. So what are some of the medicinal benefits to this plant, and how do we get it? So, we can make a tea which is a hot water extract of the root to help pass kidney stones and to help you prevent getting more as a diuretic to also get rid of parasites like worms. And the seeds from this plant have been used for centuries as a contraceptive. So wild carrot, Queen Anne's lace. Now let's find out why some people are afraid to forage in their yard. All right guys, here we have a really large Queen Anne's lace. And you can see that purple flower in the center. And look how hairy the stem is. I got this bigger specimen because the, the plant I wanna show you next is also a large specimen. This plant behind me, right over this guardrail, is Conium maculatum. Now this one's gone to seed, but these are usually big white flowers just like the Queen Anne's lace, but they do not have the purple flower in the center that looks like a bug sitting on there. So these have gone to seed, but if you look at the stem, not so much this great big one here, but back inside, see that smaller one? With all the purple on it? You'll have purple splotches on the stem and no pears. No hairs whatsoever, it's smooth. You can see on this big specimen right here, it's smooth. What is this plant? 
This is poison hemlock. The reason I'm not touching this plant is there's two chemicals that are found in this plant that both affect your nervous system and you don't want to touch the plant. You don't want to rip the plant out with your hands. You don't want to burn the plant. You don't want to breathe the pollen from this plant. And the reasons why is it will actually, the cause of death is going to be respiratory failure. The two chemicals are conine and y -conosine. Those two chemicals are going to shut you down. The reason again is you are going to die from respiratory failure. Those two chemicals actually interrupt the nervous system that control your diaphragm. So you really don't want to mess up Queen Anne's lace with poison hemlock. But there's the one big difference you have to remember is this has a hairy stem. There's a purple flower. They won't always have a purple flower, but if you want to be safer, harvest the ones with the purple flower. And since I've used this plant to show you the other plant, it's now garbage. So these are the reasons why a lot of people don't harvest their own food medicine. Because there are things that are going to kill you if you ingest them. You don't want to make a tea from this. You don't want to do anything with this. Like I said, you don't even want to handle it. And that's why I'm not handling it to show it to you. But stay away from anything that looks like that, all right? If you don't know for certain that you have what you think you have, it's not worth your life. So, this goes right back to what is taught in ancient text, better known as the Bible. You either know the truth, and the truth will set you free, or you're gonna take the wrong road and go right into death. That is why we have that book. The book, people always tell you that life doesn't come with a with a instruction manual. They're not true, it's not true. Don't listen to it. If you follow that book, your life will be better. If you don't follow that book, your life is guaranteed to be harder. You might know that Christ is the Son of God, and you might believe it with all your heart. You might even pray every day. But the one thing you're gonna have to watch out for is, are you following what it says? Are you following what that book says? Just like any herbal manual, are you going to follow what it says? Well, you can see the life or death in this, but it's easy to tell the difference. But you have to know, the problem we're having today and this is a little bit of a rant from Chuck Grove from Foraging Truth. Everybody wants to think that their way is the right way. Their belief is the right way to do it. That's what they believe. So it's gotta be right. You can't do that in herbalism, you'll be dead. I believe this is Queen Anne's Lace. You're dead. So when you read that book, you might be saved. You might know Christ is the Son of God. The biggest thing is are you going to follow what He says? You follow the Word, your life is automatically easier. It's not necessarily easier in situation. You might be thrown into a bunch of storms like Paul or David. David's a perfect, David, the King David in the Bible is a perfect representation of how we should go back to God. Every time when we realized we messed up, didn't mean David wasn't a man after God's own heart. It didn't mean that he didn't believe in God. But he always took the hard way. And his life was harder for it. Same with herbalism in this case. You can either know what you're doing by studying what other people have done in the past or haphazardly going through life to find an early death. So, I'm Chuck Grove. If you enjoyed the video about Queen Anne's Lace and Poison Hemlock and a couple different ways to tell the difference, then make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe. And remember, we don't need big pharma. We don't need big corporations. Everything we need is around us. It's time to start learning what your relatives knew in everyday life.
they foraged. I'm Chuck Grove, and this is Foraging Truth. Keep foraging.